going on YouTube? Today's video is going to be on 9 ball break and the 10 ball break. With the 9 ball break and the 10 ball break, with the help of this training aid, where I like to actually hit the cue ball, I actually like to hit it almost center, but no more than half a tip below center. Because the biggest thing is you do not want any top spin or any side spin on the cue ball. If your cue ball is going into the rack, you hit way too much to the top and you're going to be losing your cue ball in the rack area and you might not have a shot at the one ball itself. So try to get it a half tip below center. For the nine ball break, the best way to actually practice the nine ball break is actually pretending you're actually hitting the cue ball. And I'm going to explain how to actually do that. What I'm going to do is pretend I have a cue ball on the, by, the, by the rail itself is I'm going to get to a stance where I'm aiming towards the corner pocket. And what I like to do, of course, if you see my video for, for the stroke video and bridges, is having my thumb parallel to the shaft, my pointer finger over the shaft, and my middle finger also guiding the shaft itself. Once you're lined up to the pocket and you got your stance, the biggest thing is all the power comes from the legs. The biggest, the biggest thing with the legs is I like to have my knees slightly bent and then get my practice stroke. So that it will look like this. I'll get my practice stroke with my knees to the be knees bended. As I'm pulling back on my cue, I'm actually squatting down so I can get in a ready position to stand up for the shot. The power is on the leg, so once I'm ready to swing forward, I'm actually standing up, standing up, standing up. And I'm not moving forward, I'm just standing up and bringing my arm to, to a follow position and my back leg will automatically prop up. Now that we've been practicing it without the ball, let's go ahead and practice it with the cue ball itself. So I'm gonna place the cue ball right, right, right beside the rail. I'm gonna get my alignment with my bridge hand. I'm lined up to the pocket itself, aiming towards the pocket so I don't have to keep re-racking the racks. And then I'm gonna do my practice stroke. Once I get my practice stroke, I'll pull back and I'll pull back and squat down and then follow through. So it will look like this. If you notice, my cue stick did not point up, it pointed down. I had force going downward with the upward position. Do not go forward on the break shot itself. You are losing power that way. Now we're gonna go ahead and set up the nine ball rack. If you're gonna do a rack your own, what I like to do is I actually like to have the eight and the seven uh, right behind the one ball. If I'm breaking on the right side of the table, I'll have the eight towards the right. If I'm breaking on the left side of the table, I'll have the eight on the left side. I'm gonna explain why I like having the eight on the top and having, having those two numbers there. After that, of course you have your nine ball in the middle. These are, depending on where you play, sometimes they want the two in the, the bottom of the rack, which is fine. But these balls, don't, I don't really care where they go. But the biggest thing, my preference, I always like doing the six, the five for some reason, and then your four and three at the bottom. The biggest thing is you want a tight rack as possible. Any loose rack will have, your rack's gonna be very difficult where it opens up, especially if it's in the front of the rack itself. If the back part is loose, you'll notice the nine ball will track towards the corner pockets. So you always want to check those when you're actually setting up your rack. Once you have your rack set up, the biggest thing is when I'm actually striking the rack itself, I like to come in with the cue ball full on the one. Once you hit full on the one, my objective is to actually get the six ball tracking to this corner pocket. The seven ball will go up, go to the long rail, and sometimes it'll go on the side pocket itself. And then the two ball will go this way and it'll come towards the corner pocket, making the one ball going out and playing position for the corner pocket also. Now we know how the pattern of the, the nine ball rack is gonna look like. The best thing to do this is actually do a soft break. I know people frown the soft breaks, but if you're practicing your nine ball break, you wanna do it on the soft break, so you know exactly where to hit that one ball. From here, you can see that the two ball 
like I said earlier, hit the, the bottom of the rail and it was tracking towards this corner pocket. The seven ball hit the long rail and it was tracking towards this. Then the one ball, if I hit that harder, it would have came around this area. But the biggest thing is what I like, why I also said like having the eight ball towards the side I'm breaking because it tends to stay close to the nine. Like when I'm running out, I want the eight and nine close together so I can have an easier run out. I set up the rack again. This time I'm actually gonna do a hard break where my leg actually goes up. And you'll see my body goes straight up versus forward with a shot. You wanna go straight up for these shots. From this wreck, as you can see, I got actually a shot on the two ball. It's a nice pattern to the three. The seven and the four and the five is up here on the head string itself. But the biggest thing, like I said, no matter how hard you hit the rack, that eight ball is close to the nine ball. So once I finish all those other balls and I get to, to the nine and eight, it's a pretty much easier pattern for me. I set up the rack again, but this time I made it towards the right side of the, uh, the table where I'm gonna break on the right side. As you can see, I put all the even numbers on the right side of the table. And of course, my eight ball is on the right hand side. And one of my objective is, is try to pocket that six ball on the corner pocket and hopefully get position on the one. From this rack, as you can see, again, the two ball went to this corner pocket, the six ball went in that corner pocket, the seven ball is, it was coming, came off this side and going towards this pocket. And my favorite is eight to the nine itself. That's the reason why I like playing the eight ball or I'm gonna break if you're gonna do a rack your own. And of course I got the one ball here and it was a pretty easy run out, as you can see. For the 10 ball break, of course, you're gonna have the one on the top. What I like to do is have the four and the fives right after behind the one. It doesn't matter what side I go on, four or five. And the biggest thing is, what I like to do is actually have the nine on the left-hand side of the racket. So, of course, the 10 goes in the middle. Eight is just a habit. And what? With a two and the three, I always have the two on the left-hand side also. Then, of course, the three will be on this side. The biggest thing with a 10 ball rack, make sure it's nice and tight. And the reason why I like playing the nine over here, because once I open up the rack, the nine doesn't go as far and it'll stay around with the 10. Of course, your two ball will do a four rail position play and also with your three ball and they will go to their respective pockets over here. What I'm trying to do on a 10 ball break is get one of these two balls on the side of the pocket. Where I like to set the cue ball, I like to actually set it in the middle of the table itself. Some players like to do it on the first time in the left hand side and uh, or the right hand side itself between this, this area itself. But I get more success straight in the middle with actually a medium speed. I'm not trying to break it super hard or I'm trying to break it super, super soft. My objective is, is actually get the second balls behind the first, the one ball into the side pocket itself. From that break, I made the five and the four on the side pocket. And you can see the two ball and the three ball went four rails around. It went two ball almost made it in the corner. Of course, the three ball almost made it in the corner. I got a shot on the one. It's a little steep, but it's still rewarding for taking the shot and then getting position to the two and hopefully running the table out. Practice those break shots. Like I said before, you wanna do the nine ball break on a slow break and also on the 10 ball, you wanna do them slow. As you get better and better, do it on the rail and just try to pocket the cue ball into the pocket. The biggest thing is, like I said before, is when you're doing a nine ball break, you want that cue ball almost coming head on to the one itself and giving it a little bit of a pop and making the cue ball stay in the center of the table 
and the balls will go to the respective place. For the 10 ball, what I like to do is come on head straight and give a little back, a little pop so it goes a little bit backwards. Hopefully this helps and practice these break shots. My next video is gonna be on kicking. We're gonna do two rails and the three rail kicks. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe me. Don't forget to thumbs up. Bye bye.